Hey, what's up guys? This is Gary on my YouTube channel, Well That's Good 86 and I'm coming to you for Hot Boys Garage Episode 6 where I show you how to find the piston to valve clearance and radial clearance on a 450cc based 4-stroke engine. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so first let's talk about what piston to valve and radial clearance actually is. Technically, it's how close the valves come to the piston during engine operation. When the engine is running, the piston is moving up and down in the cylinder, and in conjunction, the cam is rotating and opening the intake and exhaust valves. So during this sequence of events, what we're interested in is how close the valves actually come to the piston. And so let's talk a little bit about what affects how close the valves actually come to the piston. There are quite a few factors. Head gasket thickness, decking your heads, large camshaft profiles, the actual piston design and piston rock within the bore, the crankshaft's rod material, engine RPM, valve size, the heat that's created by the combustion process, and even manufacturing tolerances. All of these things can affect your piston to valve and radial clearances. So how can we check these clearances? There are two standard ways. The most accurate standard way is to use check springs, a degree wheel, and a dial indicator. A lot of builders will use this method. However, that's not the method that your normal weekend warrior is going to use. The normal weekend warrior is going to use clay to check the clearances. And that's the method I'm going to focus on in this video. So I've got another bad illustration up here on the whiteboard. This blue block is our piston and this red thing is our valve. And this is to kind of illustrate what we're going to measure here. Throughout this video, whenever I talk about piston to valve clearance, it's going to be from the top of the valve pocket of the piston here and the bottom of the valve here. And when I talk about radial clearance, it's going to be from the tip of the outside of the valve here to the edge of the piston's valve pocket here. So safe values for these for a 450cc based four stroke engine, specifically the Honda TRX 450R. The intake piston to valve clearance, 60 thousandths minimum. The exhaust piston to valve clearance, 80 thousandths minimum. And the radial clearance, 20 thousandths minimum. All right, a couple of quick notes before we get started here. The engine that you're gonna see in the video is not a stock engine. This is a dedicated drag racing engine built by Racers Edge Arizona. It's been bored and stroked to 649 cc's. It's got a custom billet head, billet cylinder with no water jackets. It's got a lockout clutch and in place of the crankshaft check hole where you would normally remove to access the crank bolt to actually turn the engine over manually, we've got a remote starter nut and bolt here. So that's just a couple of things to note as we go through this video in case the stuff on my engine doesn't look like the stuff on your engine. So to complete this process, you're gonna need a few tools and specialty pieces. First up, you're gonna need an assortment of metric sockets, eight, 10, 12, and 14 millimeter at least, a ratchet, pliers, both regular and needle nose, some flat screwdrivers, including a small one, Allen wrenches or Allen sockets, a torque wrench, and a small impact will speed things up. You also need some calipers, flashlight, some lubricant such as WD-40 or engine oil. You'll also need some modeling clay. I found this stuff on Amazon for pretty cheap. I'll stick a link to it in the video description. And you'll need a pen and piece of paper to write down your measurements. Lastly, if you haven't already set your valve lash, you'll need some feeler gauges, both angled and flat, as well as some shims, such as uh, this hot cam shim kit here. Clay checking your clearances can be done with the engine installed in the bike. You just have to remove your seat, gas tank, plastics, and all that good stuff in order to access the top end of the motor. But for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it on the bench. If you're planning on degreeing your camshaft, I'd recommend that you go ahead and do that now before checking clearances. And that's because where you set the intake center line of your cam is gonna affect your piston to valve clearance. So I'd recommend degreeing your camshaft first and then clay checking your clearances. And for degreeing your camshaft, I've got a video for that. It's actually the video prior to this one, which is Hot Boys Garage episode five. If I can figure out how to do it, I'll stick a link in the video here now, and I'll put a link in the video description to the cam degree video. All right, so first up, we're gonna remove the three valve cover bolts, remove the valve cover. We're gonna remove the spark plug here. 
We're also going to remove the flywheel check hole cap here. And on the clutch side of the motor, you're going to remove the crankshaft check hole here. Now again, that's to access the crank bolt so you can manually rotate the engine over. The engine we're doing this on today has a remote starter bolt in place of that crank hole check cap, so we're going to use it to rotate the engine over manually. Okay, so once you've got your flywheel check hole and your crank check hole plugs out, you're going to want to put an Allen wrench on a ratchet, stick it through here so that you can rotate your engine over manually. You're going to come up here, you're going to, you're going to rotate your engine over manually until your intake lobes on your cam are facing back and slightly up like this. Then you're going to take a flashlight and you're going to look down here in your flywheel check hole and you're going to rotate your engine over or have a buddy rotate your engine over while you watch for it. And you're going to look for a mark with a small T next to it. And you're going to want to line that up with the slit running down those threads right there in the flywheel check hole. So trying to do that on camera with a flashlight through that hole is really hard. So I've got an extra flywheel here to show you guys what I'm talking about. The mark you're looking for is if this camera will focus little dash there with the T next to it. That's what you want to line up. Not this other mark. There is another mark on all the flywheels with an F. That's for fire. The T is for timing. You want that dash there with the T on it to line up and then you're going to come back up after you've lined that up with your flywheel check hole to your cam sprocket. Make sure you're level looking at your cam sprocket on the left hand side you're going to find the little tick mark on your cam sprocket and make sure that lines up perfectly with the arrow behind it on your cam tower. Now my tower is a billet cam tower and the little arrow kind of sucks on it but uh, the arrow is going to be much more apparent on a stock cast cam tower. Those two, that little dash there on the cam sprocket and the arrow on the cam tower need to line up perfectly. Otherwise your cam timing is either advanced or retarded. Now once all your timing marks line up, that means your cam is in time and you are at top dead center. Now it's time to check your valve lash or your valve clearance. And we'll do that using our feeler gauges. Next, you're going to want to loosen up the two cam sprocket bolts here. They take a six millimeter Allen and they are usually installed with red Loctite. So they're probably going to be a little bit tough to get out. Either you or a buddy will also need to hold the engine over here so that the cam sprocket doesn't spin when you're trying to loosen these bolts. Just a quick note though, if you're doing this with the engine installed in the frame, you're only going to have access to this bottom bolt here because the frame itself is going to come down like this and you're not going to be able to get to this bolt. So in that case, you're going to want to rotate the engine over so that this bolt is on the bottom. You're going to want to remove it first and then rotate the engine back over so that it's at top dead center and remove the other cam sprocket bolt. The next step after that will be removing the cam chain tensioner. This one here has a custom manual cam chain tensioner. Uh, yours will look quite a bit different. I'll see if I can find a picture of one and stick it in the video. Uh, it's probably easiest just to go ahead and remove it completely from the cylinder. Now, once you've got your cam sprocket bolts removed, you're simply going to slip the cam sprocket off of the cam flange and then slip your cam sprocket out of the cam chain and remove it. And then for the cam chain, you can just let it fall down into the engine for now. Next, we'll remove the four cam tower bolts here and here. After removing the four cam tower bolts, we'll gently rock our cam tower assembly back and forth to free it up. And then we'll carefully lift it up 
off of the cylinder head and we'll need to be careful because a lot of times the intake buckets will stay inside of the cam tower like they did here and a lot of times also the intake valve shims will also stick to the intake buckets so just take care not to drop those in the engine so if your intake valve shims did stick go ahead and pull them out now and set them around or close to the valve that they came out of and set your cam tower assembly aside. Next, you can go ahead and remove the shims for each valve. The intake shims are here and the exhaust valve shims are here. If you have trouble removing them, you can use a small magnet like this to pull them up and out. Make sure you keep them separate and note which valve they go to. This will be important whenever we're reinstalling everything. I usually just grab a note card, label it like this, and stick the shims in the spot that they go. So if you're doing this process with the engine out of the frame and on the bench, you'll have already drained the coolant. But if you're doing this with the engine in the frame, you might not have already drained the coolant out of the engine. Now is a good time to go ahead and do that. First, remove your radiator cap. It's located on the right side of the bike near the front. Then on the front right side of the engine, you'll find the water pump here. And to drain your coolant, you want to slowly remove the bottom water pump bolt, which is right here. Have a drain pan ready. If your drain pan is clean, you can sometimes reuse your coolant. Next, if you've got a stock head, you wanna remove the thermostat housing, which are these three bolts here. You also want to remove the electrical connection for the thermostat here. And you wanna remove the coolant line located here underneath the thermostat housing. Our next step is gonna to be to remove these two bolts here on the side of the cylinder head. And then after you've got those two bolts removed, you're gonna come up top and remove the four nuts from the cylinder head studs here and here. After you've got the bolts and nuts removed holding the cylinder head down, you're gonna lift the cylinder head straight up and off of the jug. Now this is another point where it might come in handy to have a buddy help you, especially if you're doing this on the bench. Your buddy can hold the engine down while you pull up on the cylinder head. Sometimes it'll take some wiggling back and forth to get the cylinder head to come up and off. Oftentimes I'll use a rubber mallet to gently persuade the cylinder head off. Just be careful and, and give it a few taps with this if need be. Don't be wailing on it. This stuff is aluminum, so it'll break fairly easily. Now, now with the cylinder head off, you can set it aside. Note that your head gasket may stay on the cylinder or it might stick to the cylinder head. So another quick note, as far as head gaskets go, when you're checking piston to valve clearance, I'd recommend either using the same head gasket that you're gonna run the engine with or a head gasket with the exact same compressed thickness. Technically, you can clay check the clearances without a head gasket and then add in the compressed thickness of the head gasket to your measurements to get the actual piston to valve clearance. But clay checking the piston to valve clearance without the head gasket in place does actually retard the cam timing. And retarding cam timing does affect piston to valve clearance. Retarding cam timing will give you more room on the intake side or more clearance on the intake side and less on the exhaust and advancing cam timing will actually give you more room on the exhaust side and less clearance on the intake side. So again, I'd recommend using the same head gasket that you're gonna run the engine with or one with the exact same compressed thickness. And if you're wondering whether or not a new head gasket will sustain having the cylinder head put on, torqued down, and removed a couple times in order to check your clearances, most head gaskets are pretty resilient. And nine times out of 10, it's not gonna affect how they seal up as long as you're not adding coolant to the engine or bringing the engine up to temperature in between your piston to valve checks. Next, we're gonna take a little bit of engine oil or WD-40, and we're gonna lightly coat all four valve pockets. And we're gonna do this because we don't really want the clay to stick to the piston. We're gonna to wanna to be able to peel it off of there. Then we're gonna take our modeling clay, and we're gonna pinch some off and put some in each valve pocket. All right, now you can see here, I've got my modeling clay in place. What you generally wanna do is you wanna focus most of the thickness of the clay to the outside of each valve pocket here and back here. And as far as thickness goes, I usually go with somewhere between 150 and 250 thousandths, 
depending on what engine it is I'm putting together, that'll be the initial thickness of the clay that you put on the piston here. And also a couple of things to note here, you wanna keep the clay away from the edges of the piston. See how I got it kind of back away from the edges of the piston. And that's because you really don't want the clay sticking to the cylinder wall. And we'll also put a liberal amount of lubricant, whether it's WD-40, engine oil, whatever you wanna use, on top of the clay here and on top of the piston. And I'll also usually coat the valves in it as well. And that's because we definitely don't want the clay to stick to the valves and pull up off the piston. And we also don't want the clay getting in between the valves and the valve seats. All right, now I've got the clay covered in engine oil as my lubricant. I've got my head gasket that I'm gonna use in place. And now it's time to start putting things back together. We're gonna to stick the cylinder head back on. Another thing to note, don't forget that there are dowels that go in between the cylinder and cylinder head. This particular engine's got them right here and right here. Also, don't forget to make sure that your cam chain guide is in place as well. Now with the head back on, you're gonna install the four nuts on the head studs and torque them down to spec. And I believe spec for stock head bolts are 40 foot pounds and for ARP head bolts, 50 foot pounds. And another thing I like to use is a dab of uh, this Yamalube grease on the head studs whenever I'm tightening these nuts down and torquing them down. After you've got the nuts on the four head studs torqued back down, you're gonna to wanna to put the shims back in on top of the valves. Just remember, you want the size shims in there that's gonna give you the correct running valve lash. Usually that's six thousandths on the intake side and 11 thousandths on the exhaust side. But that does vary by cam manufacturer and cam grind. Then we'll install our cam carrier assembly. Make sure that whenever you're installing the carrier, the cam has its intake lobes facing back and slightly up like this. Also make sure both intake buckets are inside of the cam carrier assembly. Next, we'll torque these four bolts here, 10 foot-pounds. Once you've got your four cam carrier bolts torqued down, you're just gonna take a small magnet like this, snake it down inside the cylinder head, stick the cam chain, and pull it up and out. And once you've got the cam chain up like this, we'll take your cam gear and slip it down in inside the cylinder head and into the cam chain. Then what I like to do to try and get the timing as close as possible is I'll rotate the cam around to where it looks like it's a top dead center with the lobes facing back and slightly up. Then I'll take and find the cam marks and rotate the cam sprocket around inside the chain until my marks on the cam sprocket and the cam carrier assembly look like they're gonna be close to lining up. Then you'll slip your cam sprocket back up onto your cam flange, reinstall the bolts. You don't need to use Loctite on the cam sprocket bolts right yet. Then you'll wanna carry out the process to make sure that the engine is timed correctly. And you can refer back to earlier in the video where I showed you the timing marks on the flywheel, cam sprocket, and the cam carrier assembly in order to get that done. And if you're off a tooth, all you need to do is take your bolts back out, slip the sprocket back out, and move your cam sprocket one way or the other. Slip it back on, recheck your timing. You need to repeat that process until you get the engine timed correctly, because having the cam timing off just a tooth can greatly affect the piston to valve clearance. Now once you've got your engine timed correctly, reinstall your two cam sprocket bolts here, make sure they're tight, and then reinstall your cam chain tensioner. And after you've reinstalled your cam chain tensioner, I'd really recommend going back and double checking your timing one more time just to make sure the marks line up. And this is because sometimes whenever there's no tension on the cam chain, things can look slightly off. So I just like to go back and double check. Now what we'll do is we'll rotate the engine over manually, two full crankshaft rotations, which in a four stroke engine is one full camshaft rotation. And one thing to note here, if this is a new engine or new build, rotate it over slowly. And if the engine stops and won't rotate over any further, you should probably stop as well. You'll need to disassemble and see what the issue is. And so we'll do that. We'll rotate it over and we'll get it back to top dead center. Now that we've rotated the engine over manually, two full crankshaft rotations, we should be back to top dead center. Make sure that your cam's intake lobes are facing toward the rear and slightly up. We're gonna disassemble everything again. So remove the cam chain tensioner, your cam sprocket bolts and your cam sprocket, remove the cam carrier assembly, remove your valve shims, place them aside and label them, and then loosen and remove the four cylinder head stud nuts. All right, once you get back here where you've got everything removed and you got your cylinder head stud nuts removed, you're gonna wanna carefully remove the cylinder head again. And this is another one of those points where it might be nice to have a buddy here to help you. He could help hold the engine down while you lift the cylinder head up, and he could also be looking in between the cylinder and the cylinder head, keeping an eye on the 
clay to make sure it's staying where it's supposed to be. All right, so let's pull the cylinder head off and see what it looks like. All right, now with the cylinder head off, you can see that our clay stayed where it was supposed to be and the valves made their impression into the clay. So at this point, you could probably try and do one method of getting a radial clearance reading. Now you do that is with a set of calipers and if you can see here, you can see that the valve made an impression here in the clay and then out here is our piston. So you're gonna to wanna to measure the thickness of this little piece of clay right here. So that's one way of attempting to check the radial clearance. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these pieces of clay in half and we'll pull one half off from each valve pocket and we'll attempt to get our measurements from both the piece that we pulled off and the piece that remains. Okay, so just to show this process a little bit, what I did was is I took a box cutter, a razor blade, and I sliced each of the four pieces of clay directly in half. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking, I'm starting here at the edge, slipping the box cutter, razor blade, whatever you want to call it, up underneath the clay and gently working it down in to peel the clay up and off of the piston. And for me personally, I only do this to one half of each of the pieces of clay. That way I can measure the clay both on and off of the piston. All right, now you can see I've got the four pieces of clay removed. This camera will focus. And we're gonna go ahead and start measuring with our calipers. So to measure the piston valve clearance with the clay that's still on the piston, I'll stick my caliper up here like this, and then I'll bring it down to where it's just starting to touch. And I'll take that reading. And so sometimes if you can't get a good reading of the clay that's actually still on the piston, you can use your calipers and measure the half of the clay that was removed from the piston. And you're gonna to wanna to measure it right down here where the clay was at the very edge or outside of the valve pocket. And the same thing for radio clearance. You can't get a good reading of the clay that's still on the piston. You can measure your radio clearance with your calipers on the clay that's off of the piston just like this. And so that's pretty much it. Rinse, repeat for all four valves. If you want, you can only do one intake and one exhaust. You can only measure what's on the piston piston or what's off. You could do all the measurements and uh, average them all together and that is separately for the intake and exhaust. Just depends on how your readings come out and what you choose to do. Now you just need to remove all the clay from the piston. If you see that you've made any deep scratches or gouges in the piston with the razor blade, I'd recommend going ahead and hitting those and knocking them down with the uh, dark red scotch bright pad. Okay, so now that you've found your piston to valve and radial clearance, what happens if you don't have enough clearance? Well, I put a few options up here on the whiteboard. First, you can swap part. You can use a different piston, different cam, different cylinder head, etc. You can use a head gasket with a different thickness. I believe Cometic will make custom head gaskets to your specifications. You could have your piston's valve pockets fly cut, and that's where a machine shop will actually mill out the inside of the valve pockets to allow for more clearance. And lastly, if it's just a little bit of clearance you're looking for to get you within the safe minimums, you can move your cam timing. Retarding cam timing will give you more room on the intake side and less clearance on the exhaust side, and then advancing cam timing will do the opposite. It'll give you more room on the exhaust side and less clearance on the intake side. And then down here at the bottom, I put a small note for radio clearance. Moving cam timing is not gonna really fix radial clearance. Adding head gasket thickness probably isn't gonna fix it either. Your two options there are to fly cut the piston or just use smaller valves. So that's pretty much it. I hope you guys learned something. I sure did have fun making the video. As always, if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button. You can also follow me in between videos on social media, at Hot Boys Racing on Instagram. And we have a page on Facebook, which is Hot Boys Racing, which is our ATV drag racing page. I'll stick links to both of those in the video description. And that's a wrap. Thanks for watching.